So hi and good morning, everybody. I, I would like to start with a little story that I had last week. So I just went out to the park and had a just a little sun bath and was sitting there and um, and kind of noticed that it's not only other people don't talk to other people, it's including me don't talking to other people. <laughs> it's like having um, like a program that is just like entwined in our consciousness. And I can say that only from my perspective that, I just need to change that here, it's distracting me. That, that kind of tells me don't talk to strangers. Don't talk to people you don't have a relationship with. Don't talk to people you don't have an agreement with. Don't talk to people you are not connected with on any level. So I was sitting there on this grass and looking around and there were just only people talking with each other, of course, who know each other. And then like little islands with people were separated. And then I looked at myself, well, I'm one of these islands separated from anybody else. And there was another person sitting just like maybe 15 meters across with the back towards me reading a book. And then I was thinking, okay, so what would I do to make connection to this person and have a conversation that is just a normal conversation? So I just try to walk around that people, not approach that person from the back and not from the side. So I approach that person and I just, everybody can hear me well? Good. Okay, perfect. So I was walking around that person and approached it from the front. And then I was three, four meters away and said, hey, can I talk to you? And uh, this person looked up from my book and said, just like, uh, 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 I said, oh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. I saw that you're reading and, um, and because I'm writing a book and, and I would like to have a conversation, are you, do you have time for a few moments? And then this person said, oh, yeah, sure. And then I started a conversation about this, like it created a meta a moment and asked this person, so this book is actually about how do we engage and what the agreements are that we just have when we talk with each other. And, um, and would you like to hear more about that? So, and then we started a conversation um, and I noticed how much anxiety I had still walking up to a stranger, having a conversation that is just like out of the blue and has no goal and no meaning. Interesting. So I um, wanted to point that out, how, how much that is kind of part of the conditioning software. Don't talk to, we, we don't talk to strangers. We, we don't engage with others we don't know. Cellular, emotional, rational, so deeply stamped in the system. Incredible. Let's start with the object. So get comfortable, find something to take in your hands and start the timer. And if you like, so just see it as a mindful meditation. Sometimes it's difficult to focus all your attention to the stimuli because the rational mind is very busy or there are some feelings or emotions running through the system. And I invite you to stay in action with your hands on the object. Oh. <sighs> 
And just allow your breath to flow. And slow your hands down till they stop. Stay there with the sensation in your body for a moment. And then slowly and gentle, come back to the screen. See your attention. I noticed during that and sharing that story that I shared before, that there is actually a lot of sadness in me, a lot of sadness about how disconnected we all are and how difficult it is to um, really connect on the level how I want to connect and how much longing I have for connection. Yeah, so that's me. Okay, let's have a check in. Let's give it half a minute to a minute each. Where are you in the practice? What's difficult? Where are you right now? And um, kind of what's the essence 
where you are now in this process after eight weeks or as long as you practicing before. And let's start with, ah, so thank you everybody. Um, so uh, I could just speak to each and one of you who's, who spoke and uh, give a reflection and I would like to put that reminder here in at the moment that there is the opportunity for you who just joined that course that there is still this half an hour free um, session call that you can have with me. I will put the link about Calendly where you can sign up for that in if you haven't done so. So please feel totally entitled to take advantage out of that if you, if you, if you want to. So I just want to let you know normally I charge 150 euros per an hour and that's half an hour for free. So and it can go very, very deep with your individual request if you have one. So that's a free offer for you. I would like to play one little game that was coming in my mind the moment when I was sharing about sadness and disconnection and how we all, all want to be more connected to a degree. And it's a little game that works pretty well one-on-one -on -one and works obviously here as I figured that out. And um, I would like to, and I think you know that um, Lisa, can I, can I do a demo with you? Yeah. Okay. What we do is for, and it's just a minute and we do them breakout rooms and then you just do that with somebody else is that when you with another person one-on-one -on -one in the breakout room with one, and I hope that works out this time, that you choose when you want to opening up your eyes and then you say hello. And you choose when you want to close your eyes to you say goodbye. And you will notice pretty fast how quick you start to engage with the other person saying hello or goodbye. And my invitation is that, that you notice that that you just want to engage with the other person, say hello and goodbye. But the invitation is to stay with your own choice of saying hello and goodbye independently from the other person's hello and goodbye. Yeah? Okay, so we start with closed eyes. We just do that for, for, for a few seconds. And um, uh, um, you will see. <sighs> hello. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Hello, hello. goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Bye. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, thank you. So it's super simple, super easy. And the easier it gets, the more you will find out about yourself. Uh, is there any question about that? So we do that. Uh, for about two minutes and then have a few moments with each other to debrief another minute or two so that the entire thing will take about five minutes. All right, I see some smiling faces. That's a good sign. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Anybody would like to share something? Was it meaningful? Did you found something out about yourself? Anything that's valuable. Yeah, I just want to say a few words about this super simple exercise. Um, we did in the very first, I don't know, first or second um, uh, session, we did uh, the um, polyvagal theory, the nervous system, and how the social engagement system is literally determined if we are safe or connected or if we don't. So specifically in this little exercise that um, can give you a reference point when you connect with another person is that connection literally um, made internally and 
can you feel it or are you just like operating from a place of automatism so how how you notice that is that you can make that choice to opening up your eyes when you want and speak related to your eyes what hello or goodbye so how that works is so the eyes they're having a specific muscle here that calls you um uh, orbicular or, or ocularis is connected to a muscle that's related to your middle ear and that's as well connected to the larynx and the vocal cords um, and it's, it's another nerve connection called the laryngeal nerve and that's all one big nerve complex in your social engagement system specifically in your face how you regulate co-regulate and how your internal landscape literally looks and feels when you connect with another person so that that you uh, frontal lobe in the neocortex where you make that choice um, to opening your eyes and say hello and close and say goodbye um, has to be fully switched on otherwise you cannot make that choice and that only happens when you're safe with another person and from there it is it goes either connection or no connection it's, it's really fascinating. So Stephen Porges book, The Polyvagal Theory, um, highly recommended, is really good stuff. And this little exercise might show you. If you have time and space, ask anybody else from the group. If you have listening turns with each other, um, just do it again. <laughs> and uh, do hello, goodbye for a couple of, of minutes, just like to see what you find ab out about yourself. And it's, it's kind of really helpful and um, it goes deep. So um, why do I want to, where do I want to go today? So we were talking the last two times about the shadows and how the shadows can be coexist with the intention of meaning well and caring and being, um, from love and care to another person and that the distinction about if it's a shadow or if it's not a shadow most of the time comes from the other person or from observer from the outside or if another person put themselves in a the shadow um, that they put you in a shadow but now i want to try to just go into the so-called interpersonal space that we all love where connection with other people having this quality of access to the unified field of consciousness where we just merge with another so where we where we want to hang out with each other it's not only the connection to um, another human being and to nature and uh, the world around us it is the the access way into this infinite connection into the unified field of consciousness of oneness it's a spiritual pathway and um, and being connected there with another person and merging into oneness this is the highest value that i found and specifically when it comes to love making and sexual connection this is where it's happened so there's no neurologically that's the only space that i know was another person and that's that's my highest um i wouldn't say goal or a, a, intention is the word it's my highest intention and i want to show you where to find that how to find that and Give you a little bit overview about the system okay and from there i want to go next week in how this applies as well in um, uh, the professional setup if you're working with people or if you want to work with people and how how to use that and then there is another entire course just for professionals and how to use it with with people individually as clients 
but the foundation has to be in place. It doesn't matter if we are individuals, if we are in a couple with somebody else, or if we are a practitioner. So if this foundation, if this is not in place, say again, Robert? Is that the new course that just started? Yeah, is that the new course that just started, the practitioner um, course? Or is that a different course? No, it is the practitioner intensive course for practitioner. The, the course that I just started is um, intimate relating um, and body empowerment. And I haven't really fully um, given that out, but that's a drop in course so everybody can drop in there anytime. So it's a, it's a continuum of that what we do here. But related well, to that, you just started. So the, the one you're speaking about is a future offer. It's a future offer, yeah. There's a future okay. offer. I push now a record button on another camera so that we have a really good quality. So that when you get see the recording afterwards, that you can see what I'm doing. I hope it works out this time. So um We started with everybody can see that? All right. So we started with this simple model where we have the shadows down here. Then we so all this unconscious stuff, survival strategies. And then we have the base here, our inflow, our rights and responsibilities to say no, and um, being responsible for our feelings. And then we have here in the middle, we have, oh, wrong colors, sorry. Then we have here in the middle the engagement zones. And zones. So where you have here on this side, you have either permission or you have on this side the, and I don't know if it lands, the, the agreements. And when we practice the inflow, so when our direct route is open here, and when we have played this in the engagement zones with the inflow and you have played the three minute game with a lot of people and you have found your deepest truth in there of connection, then you will end up here in this place on top, what is the apex. So the apex, this is what I call the interpersonal space. So the, the so-called zero point or the start of the zero point where love and care is happening, where winning is happening, where lovemaking is happening, where engagement is happening. And from there, you have the possibility to go into transpersonal. So, how did I found that? And I just want to give you an overview about that. It is, some of you might be familiar with the um, um, Hindi sign of the Om, the, the Om sign, yeah? And I'll just draw that quickly. So the Om sign is, no, i just do it right. The Om sign is, you start with this one here, yeah? Ah, you have it, great. Thank you, Gregory. <laughs> then you have the, the second layer. What is this one here? Yeah. Thank you, Gregory. And then you have the third layer. What is this one here? And then you have the fourth layer. What is here? And then you have this dot here in the middle. Yeah, so this was 
my deepest revelation when I started developing the somatic consent engagement system, how this is just like all entwined. So you can literally put the shadows in this place, is the unconscious here. The shadows are here. This is where deep sleep is. This is where people unaware, completely unautomatic, conditioned, not connected, um, you know, cyborgs, <laughs> unconscious. And then you have the next state, what is the wake up state. This is here the base. The wake up state is, oh, I have a right and responsibility for choices. Oh, I can activate my inflow. Oh, I can, um, I can say no, I have a right to my boundaries and to my limits. Oh, I'm the one who is in charge about my feelings and I have the rights to express whatever I feel in the moment because it belongs to me. So my internet is a little bit unstable at the moment. So that's the base. And then you have here, um, so the wake up sp space, and then you have here the continuum of that one here, what is in this sign, the, um, the, it calls still the dream state, the dream state while you are awake. And the dream state while you are awake, this is where the engagement zones are happening, where you have permission and, and agreements. So where you practice asking this question, hey, may I feel you? Hey, can you, can you empty the dishwasher? Hey, um, hey, what would you like? Um, so where you practice connection, where you practice physical, emotional autonomy. So this is where you go to school in life. And when you have activated that, and when you know how to do that, then you enter this place that is up here, and this is already the apex here. So the apex is that place of interpersonal, altruism, love and care for others, connection, lovemaking, um, uh, everything around um, um, being together with friends, hanging out, just being in the flow, being in alignment and having a good time with each other, the apex. And then you have this other place here, and this is the so-called the Bindu. And the Bindu is in this tradition in spiritual and personal development, the void. So the void is that place, um, if you just look into the nervous system, where you recognize and realize yourself as non-existing, you're nothing. So how to translate that into the system? When you take this one here and you look from on top of that one, and I've shown that to you before, you have, then you have in this square, when you look from on top, you have here the permission, I just write a P, and then you have here on this side the agreements. So it's literally as if you're looking from here, yeah, so this too, you look from on top, and here you, you look from here. So where you have the, um, the dynamic here of, and I just still write it in again so that you just have a reference, it's either your action and it is for you, or it is your action and it is for them, or it is their action and it is for them, or it is their action, it is for you. It's either or. So this is what is happening here in the engagement zones. This is happening here in this um, waking up state, in the, in, uh, in the, in the 
um, going into deeper embodiment of this entire dynamics. And the apex, what is happen uh, um, where, the, where the oneness is happening, it is this place here. So the, and this is what I call this, the zero point. And the zero point is embodied empowerment. This is from the place where you have a clear vision, where you can see. Now about the values. So does it make sense for, for everybody or is it too difficult? Yeah, okay. So now the values and how you can translate that. And this is a lifelong process, I imagine. And that works for each one of us individually. And we cannot put that in a certain box and say, this is how it is, because each one of us has their own path, our own journey of life, wherever we want to go and wherever we are. But there was an, another thing, and this is similar, like I learned that in the Wheel of Consent from Betty Martin, I started having um, mentoring calls with Harry Feddes, the inventor of the three-minute game, and we were talking about a different perspective here. And this is what you said, Lisa, that when your direct route is open and when you can feel yourself and, and you touch a client and you are fully in alignment and truth about yourself, people will have a transformative experience. So, but when you come from the place of your inflow is open, so you do it for yourself, when we look only into the wheel of consent, we would say, well, if this is not a fully agreement and they don't understand it, you would come from a shadow. And this is not the case. Because, and, and I had really deeply conversations with Harry Fettis about that, when, you, when your inflow is open and you come from a place of love and care, you give your gift of power to the other person's benefit to surrender. And that is a segue into spiritual awakening. Because people coming out of sessions like that, they have mind-blowing experience they never had before. They never got touched that way in their entire life. So, so, and I just want to clean that up because um, Betty Martin is talking within the wheel of consent that integrity happens in the taking quadrant. And my correction of that is that integrity is not happening in the taking quadrant because integrity happens in the action dynamic. Because when you are in action and when you are in alignment with yourself and your words and with your action and with the person you engage with, then you drop into integrity here in the action quadrant. Integrity. Forgive me if it's this, this spell mistake. I don't know. So then you come into integrity because you know that your action is either for you or you know that your action is either for them. And integrity means here that you are clear when your action is for you or for them. And when you give your gift of power, then you are in integrity. Yeah. Opposite side, surrender. Surrender, as it has been said, is only happening in the allowing part, but that's not true either. Surrender happens in when other people are in action towards us. Surrender happens when action happens in, in the big picture towards us. Surrender either to somebody else's action when they do what they want to do, or I surrender to my experience when another person is doing what I want them to do. So surrender is an internal process where I can let go of control when the action is either for you or the action is either for them. Yeah? So surrender happens in the action dynamic not in the allowing, giving permission dynamic. 
and then you have um, where the gift is happening. It's either for you and it's either for them. So when it's for you, it is either your action or when it's for you, it's either their action. And what the value is that comes out of that is gratitude. Because you either receive a gift by access and you become grateful for it, or you either receive a gift by somebody else's action. And the value of gratitude is not about from the shadow place, now I owe you something. It's about the joy of being grateful. Gratitude for the gift that I received. Gratitude for the gift that I am. Gratitude for the place in this life being alive. Grateful for having this body. Grateful for nature and having air and being alive. Grateful is a spiritual discipline in itself. And then you have the other side. This is when it's for the other person, so where you give, and it's either um, your action where you give, or it is their action where you're giving access. And here you become generous. And here you become clear about your limits. How generous can you be? You become generous and you, because you know your base and you know your limits and you know your boundaries. And then you can give as much as you have. Because what you don't have, you can't give. So this is a spiritual map of the values of where it will go the more you practice. I want to go there next time a little bit deeper as you're kind of a good bunch of professionals in here. So we talk in this dynamic of as imagine there is in this structure here on top of that. So up here, that here on top is another engagement zone in the apex. So that when you have your integrity, your generosity, your gratitude and your surrender in place, just imagine as if here in this place, it is for them that this entire structure is in there again, on top, on the apex. So that when you give a gift, you know when you are on top of that where you are at from an embodied place. You can translate and transform that in every professional engagement because you know where your limits are as a giver and your job up there is to let the other person find their deepest layer of receiving. Let's have a conversation. Where is it landing? So when you are in the shadows, there is the love of power. When you are in the apex, I call that there is the power of love. And the power of love and care from an altruistic place where you give because you have. You're not coming from the shadow because you have to. You give because you can. And what the other person is doing from that place, from this altruistic place, is their choice. Because when the gift is given, it's not longer yours. I say over this, I uh, know, many, um, nearly 10 years practicing that and teaching that is, um, and that was my approach when it, when it came into my life. And I, I, I spoke to uh, Betty Martin this time, just so like, I just want to teach that. And then she said, you know, before you can teach that, you have to have it. And to get it, you have to play the three minute game with a couple of hundred people or you have to play it a couple of hundred times with different people so that you learn the values, you learn integrity, surrender, gratitude and generosity by finding deeper layers of yourself while you're practicing. And there is no substitution for that. 
And for practicing that, you need to have the direct root in place and you, you start practicing from the direct root with other people that will opening up layers in you that go so far back in preconditioned times as a human being, neurologically, emotional, that you even hadn't been aware of. Sorry, but I, I'm still, my, my question is still, is still the same. So when you touch the client, yeah. are you doing it for you or are you doing it for them? When, when you see this structure here, so with, within this place here, in the engagement zones, this is not where you are with clients. You are on top here with clients. This is where client work is happening. So client work means that you utterly for them only. But to be for them only, and that it comes to the difference between one-way touch and two-way touch, you have to be capable of opening up the door into two-way touch so that you are capable of showing the client how to find it. So that means you have to touch the client in this way, like you said, Lisa. In this, in this case, what you described, Lisa, you touched the client for them, but it was a clear one-way touch dynamic. Yes, and because this is, this is a, really, a really interesting distinction here is that it is a session and you, they come to you for that session. So you are a provider of a service. And when you, in clear taking, it is still for them. This, it, this is where you give your gift of power because you are the person in charge. This is a really important distinction to make. And to offer this as a service is high quality embodiment. Does it resonate what I'm saying with people? Okay, just want to check in because it gives me the goosebumps just talking about it. I would, I would, I would love to say something here and I try to make it as neutral as I possibly can. Um, and the important piece that I want to share here is that the structure of the triangle and the structure of the pyramid is highly hijacked from Freemasonry. Yeah. So, on a on a on a on a spiritual level and on a on a personal individual level, our entire conditioning in life is hijacked through Freemasonry since I don't know four five hundred years. Yeah. So we are literally to a level brainwashed and controlled through the high authorities of Freemasonry that we actually don't know of. So, and I want to be really careful with every name that I'm dropping here, any other spiritual person who is associated with Freemasonry um, without judging uh, anything or trying not to judge because I do. And I know how deep the conditioning goes into my system. and. Um, and I, I know how much we are all brainwashed and controlled, and this is my intention to find a segue, a pathway, an opening back into our sovereignty and our autonomy that has nothing to do with any other system that is controlling us. Yeah. But, and, um, and, and, and please forgive me if I said it in a kind of an emotional way, because I am emotional there. And I just want to make sure that, that you know that I really appreciate you and I don't want you to feel judged by that, what I'm saying. But I, I am probably judged. All right, we have another five or six minutes. One or two people would like to... Um, yes, okay. I make it as clear as I can in this short period of time. Um, so I want to go back here. This was blowing my mind when that dropped into my body and that's not the whole story yet. The masculine dominance of the symbolism of the triangle and of the pyramid upwards. You see that in the phalluses in, um, in Rome, you see that in London and you see that in, in Washington DC. 
You see that on the dollar note, you see that everywhere in the world, the masculine symbol is this one here. And it has been dominating the world for long enough. So the masculine symbol means that this is the only truth, but it's not. The only truth is that this is just half of the truth. This truth has another half from this masculine symbol, and that's the feminine symbol. When you look into the um, um, Maria Magdalena idea, when you look in the Holy Grail, when you look into the structure of the feminine, it is exactly the opposite. And now all of a sudden you have the Star of David. Yeah, Judaism, they're keeping the other half of the truth in the world related to personal spiritual development on a higher level of awakening of the collective. When you translate this structure into the Kabbalah, it's a code of awakening. So that this structure of the engagement zones here, this of asking this question, happens in an ascending and descending way. And we need to practice both female and male. There is no male or female aspect different being in a man's body or being in a woman's body. The only different aspect is that the vagus nerve in the female body is connected to the sexual organs. And that's the reason why in patriarchy, the feminine structure, females, got suppressed for thousands of years. Just saying that. I, I don't want to go much deeper in that. But this, this, is, this is not only um, the three-minute game what we're playing here. All right. So, <laughs> don't want to blow you too much out of the window. Take something in your hands. I have another four minutes. <sighs> so while you lean back, come back to the connection. Come back to the inflow and let all these informations, whatever you feel at the moment, just vibrate in your body as it is. So notice what you notice and let all this stuff that you have just heard that's being said, let that vibrate wherever it is and while it vibrates, you can still bring all your attention straight back there to your skin. I'm not trying to sell you a truth. I'm not trying to sell you a belief or crush a belief that you're having. My intention is to let you find your inflow and build your truth radical from your own experience. And all starts here in your connection with yourself. And the world you live in, nature and people. Just notice what you notice.
Each one of us can create from here, can build the reality with people we want to live in. We're all powerful. Self-sovereign. We are all creator. Manifesta. This is not a belief system. And slow down till you stop. <sighs> Bring your awareness back to the screen. Apologies, we are a few minutes over. If you need to leave, please take care of yourself. And let's have a check out two, three words. How do you feel at the moment with everything we have been going through today? Ah, I'm, I'm feeling vibrant, excited, and um, I'm grateful that I felt there was a good trans transmission today. And um, yeah, I'm feeling inspired. Next time we talk how to bring that into professionalism just a little bit. And as I said, there's an entire course around that, how to be a professional facilitator and practitioner about that work. Um, thank you everybody for joining today. Apologies for this 10, 11 minutes getting over. Please feel free to reach out to other people having listening terms, hello, goodbye games, uh, yes, no, whatever you need to practice. Um, feel people up, ask them first. Please feel welcome to <laughs> share in the group um, whatever is moving you when you digest what's going on in you. And as I said, I will post the link about Calendly so that you can take advantage of this half an hour free call that you want to have. Uh, have all a beautiful day. I post the video and I cut everything out that is personal from you so that you just have full access to that what I'm saying and uh, see you next week. Bye.